Today I'm going to talk to you about the things I no longer buy or waste my money on. And even though the topic of this video is about minimalism and saving money, there is going to be a plot twist. So we're going to jump straight into this video right now. The first thing I don't buy anymore is video games. Back when I was a kid, a teenager, even in my early adult years, like 18, 19 years old, I was very big on video games. I spent a lot, and I mean a lot of time playing video games. I made a lot of friends through playing video games. Had a lot of fun and a lot of late nights playing video games. But as I became older, started progressing in my career, graduated from college and started working a lot, I found myself playing video games less and less. And it got to the point where now I really just don't enjoy them anymore, especially if I'm just playing them by myself. Like it's, it's really not a fun thing for me to do. I'd much rather watch like an episode of something on Netflix. Now that's not knocking any grown man or woman who plays video games. I'm just saying I don't find it enjoyable anymore. Therefore, I don't spend money on video games. I just don't find them enjoyable. And for me, it's been a really good thing because I used to straight up lose track of time, space, and everything else when I'd play video games. I'd forget where I was at, what time it was, then I'd stop playing and five hours don't went by. Now that time I would have spent playing video games, I'm using either to relax, enjoy life, or make more money. Another thing I no longer buy is alcohol. Back when I was in my college days, I definitely used to drink here and there socially, like at a party or like a get together or something like that. And even though it did feel good sometimes to get a buzz, watch other people get buzzed or drunk, and just have that really fun social aspect where everybody's laughing, having a good time, eating good food, and also having really good interesting stories to tell afterwards, I just came to the realization very early on that I don't like the way alcohol tastes, I don't like the way alcohol smells, and I cannot stand the way it makes me feel. When you get a buzz, it does feel pretty good, but like after the fact, it just feels weird. Your body feels like dehydrated. And I was the type that would drink like a beer, for example, and then follow it with like a full glass of water before I drank another alcoholic beverage. That's a smart way to do it. That's how you don't get a hangover. And I've never had a hangover. But this video isn't about alcohol education. I'm just telling you I don't buy alcohol anymore. But yeah, since that doesn't add value to my life, I don't like the way it tastes. I don't like the way it smells. I don't even like the way it looks. I just, I don't want anything to do with it. So I don't drink and I do not spend money on alcohol. Again, I'm not knocking anybody who does. This is just what I don't buy anymore. And it's a pretty good thing to not buy because it can be pretty expensive. And I, and I get it. There's inexpensive options and more expensive options, but either way, like, doing something repetitively is going to add up on the long run. So that's just something I don't buy and it has made my pockets very happy. Here comes the plot twist. Here's something that I don't buy that you probably have not thought of. I don't buy into the idea that not buying certain things is going to make you wealthy, financially abundant, and make your pockets bigger all the time. Like there's some people who won't eat out like at all because they really believe that that's going to make them wealthy. Even I, in my previous video that I made about things I no longer buy, I was like, yeah, I don't buy bottles of water. Like I, w I really had to rewatch that video and think about what I was saying. And I truly believed it at the time I said it, but you know, we evolve as people. And one thing I had to realize was I'm like, Yo, buying, buying a case of water bottles is not going to make me broke. It's not going to stop me from building wealth or becoming wealthy. And just because you don't buy certain things doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be better off than other people who do buy those things. So all those videos and articles you might have seen talking about lay off the Starbucks coffee, don't buy this, don't buy that. It's cool if you don't do that stuff for a period of time. You might be able to save an extra 20 50 maybe maybe $100 in a month. That can be pretty cool. But... In the long run, like over the span of years, like that impact is not going to be that big on your life. So even if you cut out the Netflix, the Amazon, the Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, Peacock, whatever streaming services they have out there now, even cutting those out is not going to have a tremendous impact on your life. Some people may need to cut back on expenses in some places for a certain amount of time to get their savings to where they need it to get to and live a minimalist type of lifestyle and have less in their life and have less distractions in their life. But to me, the whole point of minimalism and the whole point of saving money is to still do so without missing out on life. And the way you do that is you set a budget for yourself and you set a limit for yourself if you don't like the word budget and just say, look, I'm not going over X amount of dollars a month for, say, if you're into video games, for video games. 
I'm not going to go over that limit. Or maybe video games are pretty expensive. So they're like 60 bucks. So I'm not going to go over $100 a month on video games. So if I get two video games, one of them has to be on sale. That will be an example of cutting your expenses. But you're still not necessarily missing out on life because you're still buying things that you would normally buy. You're just buying less of it. And so when I think of minimalism, I'm going to spend more of my money on what is important to me and less money on what is not important to me or not as important to me. That way you're maximizing on things that you're spending your money on that are useful and you're minimizing, that's where minimalism comes in, on things that are not as useful. For example, part of my budget every month is I will spend at the very minimum $1,000 in the stock market, minimum because that is important to me. Obviously we have stuff like rent, utilities, life insurance. I don't have very many bills, I'll be honest. So I make sure even if I'm making more money, I'm gonna make sure that the extra money is gonna go into something that is important to me, like the stock market, like my savings account. And doing that makes you more financially stable and you're still buying less things like the stock market is not tangible and my savings account isn't tangible unless I take money out of it. So externally at my place, for example, I don't have that many things because I don't feel like I need that many things, but I'd rather put my money into things that are more useful. Now, some occasionally I might buy myself some shirts, some shoes, because I do still like shoes very, very much. Growing up, I was always a sneakerhead, Nikes, Jordans, Adidas, all of that. I liked all of them. Now I've graduated into getting chucka boots and things of that nature, but you know, that's a story for another day. But occasionally I might get those things, but that's still having less stuff, more assets. You get what I mean? So that to me is what minimalism is all about. It's about thinking about the future and having less physically and less distractions. And also I think about minimalism in terms of time too. I'm going to make sure what is time effective for me. Just like I was talking about the video games. I could, I used to get lost in playing video games and I used to have so much fun because I didn't experience other areas of life that I found even more enjoyable than that. But as I did, I found myself playing less video games and the video games became less enjoyable. And as a result, I got more time back. That's just an example, but I'm sure you could think of your own examples of what is going on in your life that if you cut it, you would have so much time back. For some people, that might be your job. For others, it might just be binge watching shows on Netflix. It just, it depends. We all have some sort of advice or something in our life that blocks uh, an amount of time that if we had that time, we would do something that we were truly passionate about and truly enjoy doing. Another thing I don't buy anymore is soda. Oh my goodness. So everything I'm saying in this video, I have a pass with, I'm trying to tell you. So I used to love soda, specifically Pepsi, and I would like switch. Like some years I would be more of a Pepsi type of guy, and other years I would be like, nah, I'd rather have Coca-Cola. But it's now I just think of sugary drinks as just revolting. I don't want nothing to do with any of that. It's, it makes your mouth all sticky. It's overly sugary. It's syrupy. It's just not good. Literally all I drink now is like water, sometimes coffee, but I drink that black. But I just, it has no nutritional value. It's super sugary. Again, I'm not knocking you if you drink soda, but like that's something that I have completely eliminated. I do not spend a penny on it and I don't remember the last time I did. Something else in the sugary drink category that I don't drink in case you might ask, Gatorade. I don't drink Gatorade. If y'all, look, okay. I know it's like marketed to everyone as like a healthy type of drink that's for athletes that gets you hydrated. But if you really look at the electrolytes, if you look at the electrolyte breakdown on the nutritional label on the back of Gatorade, it does not have that many electrolytes and it has a ton of sugar. And it's like 36 grams of sugar per serving. 36 grams of sugar per serving. And like if you get one of the big things of Gatorade, there's like three servings in it. And I, I, for one, when I used to drink Gatorade, I didn't just do no one serving of nothing. Nah, like, if I had a full jug of Gatorade, I drank the whole thing. That's 36 times three. I rest my case. What I would buy instead, and this is actually more expensive than a case of Gatorade or a case of soda. What I do is, I don't know if you can see it, but this is just, this is just electrolyte powder. It has no sugar. A doctor actually made it. Shout out to Dr. Berg. This dude's channel has like millions and millions of subscribers and he's really smart. But anyway, electrolyte powder. Comes with a little uh, comes with a little scooper. You scoop it up, boom, put it in a 16 ounce glass of water, you're good. But the electrolyte breakdown on the powder actually has like the daily recommended amounts of electrolytes or at least a portion of it. 
and it tells you how many times a day you should have it to get the required amount of electrolytes your body needs. You get what I'm saying? This stuff is not mainstream, but I would rather spend like $40 on electrolyte powder that's premium, that's actually going to hydrate me, than buy a sugary mess. Again, this is coming from a, this is where I've grown from. This isn't coming from a judgmental place if you do these things, that's fine. But I will tell you, since I've been extremely hydrated, my quality of life has been a lot different. And by different, I mean better, because when I go to the gym, I've always been strong, always been putting in work to get a good workout and leaving sweaty arms, bigger legs, bigger, all of that stuff, right? But, but when I have that hydration, I can go a little harder. I can lift a little more, and I will have way more energy after the workout too. So I buy things that really benefit and add value to my life. Even if it's on the expensive side, that's better than that's better than being cheap, but then spending money on things that don't add value to your life and could make you sick potentially, like soda. Anyway, I need to stop throwing shade. All right, so here's another thing that I no longer spend money on, cable. That was something I grew up with. That was something, you know, you're sitting, you're watching TV, a commercial comes on. But I'm talking all forms of cable. They have Dish TV, they have Direct TV, they have other forms of cable that you and I have probably never heard of. But all I'm saying is that ain't something that I buy anymore myself. I just, I don't do it. Like, first of all, I really can't sit in one spot for a long amount of time and just be content with watching images on a screen and, and watching people talk and move and all this other stuff. I'm just like, eh, it's time for me to get up and do something. I need to need to go do something and I'm not a fan of commercials unless they're the commercials or ads that are on this video see then I'm a fan of them because that's what pays me but outside of that I'm not a fan so like I, I don't really watch TV I barely even watch like Netflix Disney Plus Amazon Hulu I, I have all that stuff but I don't really be watching stuff on it but I also don't pay for all of them either because I definitely have family members that we share accounts with so that's the way to do it that's why I don't spend money on half of them I currently have Disney Plus and everyone else in the family has something else so we can all, you know, cross promote, not cross promote, cross indulge in our own platforms. But anyway, this was some of like a lighthearted video, not too serious, not too focused necessarily on finances, but I really hope I did share a big idea with you earlier about just talking about how I don't buy into the idea that you should really penny pinch and specifically not buy these eight things or these 11 things if you want to be rich or if you want to accumulate wealth or if you want to be financially stable or whatever terminology you want to use like you can buy a bunch of things in life and still be well off and better off than other people it happens every single day it's really going to boil down to how much you make per year and how much you want to save per year and what you want to do with that money whether it's sitting in a savings account whether you are investing with it doing something productive with it or doing something that you're just going to splurge with there's a lot of choices you have in life and just because you have the discipline not to buy certain things doesn't mean it's there for your financial benefit. It could benefit your finances, but you want to do things to benefit your life. Now, I'm not talking about from like a materialistic level benefit. I'm talking about actually benefits your health or benefits your wealth. Buying online courses, buying books, for example, could benefit your learning and your intelligence but also it can increase your wealth if you apply the things that you learn in the course. Does that make sense? So all in all, the message of this video is do what is best for you. If you don't agree with what I say in this video, that's fine. Find something that does work for you. But I found things that one, save me some money, and two, actually benefits me by not buying them. So I hope you enjoy that and I hope you got value out of it. And at the very least, I hope you're leaving this video with a big idea that you've never thought of before. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.